Good day, grade 9 students. Welcome to Learning Science with Miss Gabs. Before we start our lesson, please take note of the following reminders. First, prepare your pen and your paper for note-taking. Make sure that you are in a comfortable place where you can watch and listen attentively to our discussion. Remember that you can play or pause this video whenever necessary. You can always go back or revisit any portion of this video lesson. Let's start! Last quarter, we had discussed about matter, specifically focusing on quantum mechanical model of atom, ionic and covalent compounds, formation of ions, carbon compounds, mole concept, and percentage composition. Before we proceed, let us see how much do you remember or let us first brush up your stuff knowledge. When you were in grade 8, you have learned the relationship between the occurrence of earthquakes and the location of the Philippines along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Due to its location, the Philippines is a home to many volcanoes. Let me ask you this question. How do you think an earthquake occurred? You are absolutely correct. Earthquake usually caused when rocks underground suddenly breaks along a fault. This sudden release of energy causes the seismic waves that make the ground shake. When two blocks of rocks or plates are rubbing against each other, they stick a little, and when the rocks break, the earthquake occurs. Why do you think Philippines is prone to earthquakes? Yes, you are right. As we all know that the Philippines lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which causes the country to have frequent seismic and volcanic activity. Did you know that there are volcanoes on other planets too? The largest volcano in our solar system isn't on planet Earth. It's on Mars. And the volcano is called Olympus Mons. Well, our topic for today is very interesting because we are going to talk about something that is beautiful but very dangerous. Do you have any idea about it, guys? Yes, I can hear you. It is volcano. Today, let us explore the wonderful and majestic mountains in the Philippines. Pack your things up. Come with me. What is volcano, by the way? Volcanoes are a natural opening in the Earth's surface where molten rocks, smoke, gases, and ashes are ejected. The word volcano comes from the word volcan. Volcanoes are usually where tectonic plates meet. Do you know what volcano is this? We are now in Albay, Biko. Did you know that this volcano is one of the most active volcano? And it is popular because of its perfect cone. This is Mayon Volcano. By the way, volcano has three basic parts, namely, where the crater or a caldera or the mouth or the opening of the volcano is located. Speaking of crater and caldera, crater is a funnel-shaped depression at the top of a volcano while the caldera is formed when a part of the wall collapses following an explosive eruption. Let's have fun! Hurry up guys, let's go to Batangas! Right, that is the Al Volcano. This volcano has many craters, not just one, two, or three, but 47 craters. Amazing, right? What we are doing right now is describing what a volcano is. We know already that a volcano has a cone shape and it has an opening at the top, or in some cases, on the sides. Volcano also gives off hot gases and emits hot rocks or molten rocks. 
Molten rocks are called magma. Magma is a hot, fluid, or semi-fluid material below or within Earth's crust and is usually made from molten rocks. When magma ejected out of a volcano, it is now called lava. Lava is an Italian word which means to slide, which is molten rocks dust once it reaches the surface. The next thing we need to do is to classify them. Do you have any idea how they are classified? Okay, let's find out. There are several ways by which volcanoes can be classified. Figures are the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology have adopted a system where the Philippine volcanoes are classified as active or inactive volcanoes. Guys, take note, we have to adopt a new classification of volcanoes according to people. Volcano, composite volcano, 
or scissored bone for me. Let us start. This is Mount St. Helens in southwestern part of Washington State. And this is an example of Write your answer in your paper. Next, let us have Mount Fuji in Japan. What do you think is this type of volcano? Another volcano we have Mauna Kea in Hawaii. This is an example of Okay now, let's check your answer. Mount St. Helens in Washington is an example of Cinder Cone Volcano. Mount Fuji in Japan is a composite volcano. Mauna Kea in Hawaii is an example of shear volcano. Good job guys! Now, let us proceed to the classification of volcanoes according to its eruption. First, we have the phreatic or also called as hydrothermal. It is a stream-driven eruption as the hot rocks come in contact with water. It is a short-lived characterized by ash columns but may be an onset or a larger eruption. It is the type of eruption that happens to the Al volcano last January 2020. Next, we have Priyato Magmatic. It is a violent eruption due to the contact between water and magma. Unlike Priyatic that happens because hot rocks come in contact with water, Priyato Magmatic eruption happens when there is an interaction between water and magma, resulting to a large column of very fine ash and high speed and sideways emission of pyroclastic cold base surges. The third is Strombolian. It is a periodic way to violent eruption characterized by fountain lava. As you can see, it looks like a fountain. That is why it is called a fountain lava. It is consisting of ejection of incandescent cinders, lapilli, and lava bombs to altitude of tens to a few hundred of meters. Next, we have the volcano. It is characterized by tall eruption columns that reach up to 20 km high with pyroclastic flow and ash fall time. They usually originate with Priyato Magmatic Eruptions, which can be extremely noisy due to the rise of magma and heating of water in the ground. Lastly, we have Plinian, or also called as Versilia. It is excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastic. It is intensely violent kind of eruption that happens to Mount Minatubo near 1990. It produces a sustained convicting plumes of pyroclastic and the gas is rising more than 25 km above sea level. Again, the five types of volcano according to its eruptive styles are phreatic or also called as hydrothermal and it is a stream-driven eruption that happens between the contact of hot rocks and water. Is the Priyato Magmatic that happens between in contact with magma and water, resulting in violent fine ash eruption. Strombolian eruption are characterized as fountain lava. Volcanian and is being characterized by tall eruption. And lastly, the Plinian as the most excessively exclusive eruption. Volcanic eruption can be very fascinating. After an explosive eruption, a semi cone shaped structure may be produced or changes on its slope can be observed. The emissions of a volcano provide us with clues on what materials are found inside the earth. Some eruptions are very explosive while many others are not. What determines the nature of eruption? There are primary factors affecting the volcano's eruptive style, namely the magma's temperature, its chemical composition, and the amount of dissolved gases it contains. These factors can affect the magma's viscosity in different ways. 
Viscosity is the property of the material's resistance to flow. It is also described as the liquid's thickness and stickiness. And thicker the material is, the greater is its resistance to flow. For instance, during our experiment, we can observe that syrup is more viscous than water. An oyster sauce is more viscous than syrup. Now, let us discuss how each factor affects the viscosity of magma. First, let's look into how temperature of magma affects its viscosity. The viscosity of magma decreases with temperature. The higher the temperature of magma is, the lower is its viscosity. As the lava flows, it cools and begins to harden. Its ability to flow decreases and eventually stops. Now, let's look at how the composition of magma affects its viscosity. Magmas with high silica content are more viscous than those with low silica content. The magma that contains less silica is relatively fluid and travels far before solidifying. In our experiment, we have observed that different liquids have different viscosities. If the liquid represents the magma, then its rate of flow depends on several factors. In the same way, we have seen in the experiment that the gas affects the viscosity of the liquid. Again, magma's viscosity is affected by different factors. Remember, Lava with less silica content has low viscosity that it can travel a great distance, forming a thin sheet. Lava with high silica content is too viscous to travel far and tends to break up as it flows. Lava with low amount of gas and high silica content is very viscous and does not flow at all as it rises, forming a columnar plug in the vent. Lava with low amount of gas, as it rises, has high viscosity that it piles up at a vent resulting in a dome. And that's all for today. We will have to continue our discussion on the next video. I hope that you learned something from this lesson. See you on the next episode. Thank you and God bless us all.